One of the things I try to do on this channel is cut through the marketing blurb that's constantly put in front of us through social media and advertising more generally, and really work out what delivers when it comes to anti-aging. The pace of technological advances in the last 10 years when it comes to treatments has been staggering. And we've now reached a point where for skin tightening, at the very least, surgery is a last resort. So between laser, radio frequency, thermal ablation, ultrasound, and chemical peels, to name but a few, what actually works best? Here to answer that very question, and he does it well, is board-certified New York-based plastic surgeon, Dr. Richard Westrick, who specializes in cosmetic and reconstructive procedures. In this two-part interview, we start today by finding out the treatments he has witnessed the best results with and why, and there's one clear standout. Then next time, we're going to look at safety and the risk of fat loss in particular. So let's hear what Dr. Westrick has to say. It's not too often I speak to a cosmetic surgeon, but when I do, it starts me thinking, and I, I was just sitting, uh, you know, just before you came on, I was like, yeah, lifting, and yeah, and then slimming the nose. Yeah. If you could do all that virtually, fantastic. You can't do it virtually, but, you know, that's, that's the whole Zoom boom. I, I don't know if you would agree, but to me, it feels like in the last five years, even if I'm looking at celebrity women's faces, the, they look so much more natural now through the range of treatments than they did certainly 10 years ago, but maybe even five years ago. So you can really see the progression of the industry. And I, I just wondered if you felt that we're a, a, in a situation now where we have such a, a kind of mix of options that we're getting to the stage where the surgical facelift may not be the most immediate choice for skin tightening. Obviously, it would be for, for changing features that you're not happy with. Um, but for skin tightening, would you say the non-surgical treatments are really coming, coming forward now as being the primary options? Well, it, it kind of depends. Mm -hmm. So I think the technology has definitely improved. That's, that's one thing. But I also think that Kind of the popular consciousness is there at a younger age mm. so people are doing more maintenance treatments younger um I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the term but some people have thrown around the term prejuvenation rather than rejuvenation oh i like that mm -hmm. um, and i believe that um you know the, the limitation with the non-surgical is kind of the degree of change you need to accomplish so yeah. there's there's a limit to what you can get with these type of treatments. And if you're past the limit, it's really not the right thing for you. Yeah. And then you're sort of looking at a surgical lift or a partial result. And yeah. that's not really an optimal situation. But I do think that people are doing things in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s that over time in the future really will kind of obviate the need for a more formal surgical lift for a lot of patients. I'm thinking about the range um, and it's a, a sort of dazzling range of options that you've got now from laser to radio frequency and thermal ablation and ultrasound and I think people are looking at, across that range of options and thinking you know what is the most effective is there a standout among them do you think that you've seen um, in, in your clinic that you think Wow. Or are there a few in there that are kind of much of a muchness? Well, I think over the last five, 10 years, it's become very clear that radio frequency is kind of the industry standard for skin type. Mm -hmm. and I think a lot of the other modalities have essentially kind of fallen by the wayside. Um, ultrasound, for example, has fallen by the wayside. And the idea of heating the skin in a controlled way was, I don't know, 10 years ago, kind of new. It was Thermage. I had a machine called Exilis, and they were surface heating, and they worked okay, but it was kind of like the beginning of understanding. So now they've sort of pushed the envelope on that, and I think got a lot of the machines to a place 
where that technology of controlled heating of the deeper layers of the skin really can provide a substantial and noticeable result. So I would say it kind of depends. The, the reason why it's so confusing is because people try to get their machine to do too many things. Yeah. So, you know, the reality is that a laser is not a great tightening device. You mm -hmm. might get a little bit of tightening, but it's not a great tightening device. It's a great resurfacing device, or it's a great device for getting rid of spots if you're targeting color. And what I think has happened, unfortunately, is that people have refused to kind of place their machines into the appropriate niche or yes. niche. Um, yes. and, and they're trying to sell it as catch-all, but ultimately, you know, you're not really going to get four simultaneous fabulous things from one treatment. It just sounds too good to be true, and it is. Uh, yeah. But I would say, in general, you know, if you need skin tightening, RF is kind of the standard. If you need skin resurfacing, lasers are kind of the standard, or some of the old ones like dermabrasion or chemical peel. Those still work great. If you're looking for spot reduction, laser is definitely the standard. If you're looking for fat reduction, then you can use RF in that capacity as well, and you're heating at a deep, deeper level. So it's really about the heat. And that's why I tell the patients is cool sculpting versus RF, for example, right? One's hot, one's cold. <laughs> so one's going to be, it's different. So you're not going to be able to compare the two. Uh, but ultimately, I think we've got away from the cold to the heat, uh, just because I think it's a little bit more regulatable. You can control the temperature. So I'm thinking that patients coming to your surgery who have a, actual skin sagging, as long as it's not uh, too far gone, but have moderate, mild skin sagging, um, you would probably recommend radio frequency as the kind of prime skin lifting and tightening treatment. Exactly. Uh, and then somebody then coming along, another person comes in and they've started to get some fine lines that they're not happy with and there's some age spots emerging and so on, you would probably recommend laser treatment. And it's those two that you really see as the primary kind of aging depend on, depending on where you are on the spectrum. Exactly. Um, those are two main ones. But like I said, there's, there's some oldies but goodies. Yeah. Right? yeah. Chemical peels still work great. Um, dermabrasion still works great. I still do those treatments because the alternatives don't work as well. Um, so there, there are little kind of branch points from that decision tree. Yeah, and where would you, um, wh why would you go over chemical peel, uh, for chemical peel over laser, for instance? Where would that be preferable over the other? So lasers come in ablative and non-ablative. Mm -hmm. so, Ablative meaning that you're actually going to remove the outer layer of the skin. So you're going to get a more substantial resurfacing result from that at the same time that you're going to get the pigment. Yeah. So if you're thinking about doing an ablative laser, like a CO2 laser, mm -hmm. I actually prefer chemical peels because I find it's a little more controllable. The patients get a little bit less redness after yeah. Um, if you're looking really more for spot reduction, there's no reason to do anything ablative. And in that vein, you'd go for laser like an IPL or, you know, an Erbium, for example, is, is pretty good with that as well. But there's, there's hundreds of lasers. So some of it, some of it is going to be dependent on what the practitioner actually has to offer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like you say, I mean, when you said earlier that some of them will say, well, we'll try and get the most value out of this one expensive piece of equipment that they've bought and they're possibly overselling that piece of equipment. So ideally you'd want somewhere with multiple options so that you were talking about the best option for you. Would, would, would you agree with that? Absolutely. I think that the, the perfect example of that is Fraxer, right? Yeah. Fractal is the jack of all trades and master of none, mm -hmm. um, which makes it a good treatment if you're trying to do multiple things. It has some other advantages in that it's safer for certain skin types. 
But, you know, for me and my practice, you know, I'm a surgeon. So I've invested primarily in tightening machines. Yeah. And then I've gotten other things like spot removal, hair removal. Um, but I don't have 17 lasers. Yeah. So, you know, I'll have the things that are at my disposal and, you know, at, to a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? <laughs> but I'm also aware that, you know, I have plenty of colleagues in New York City that have tons of wonderful machines. And if there's a better one for what the patient's looking for, I'll just recommend them there. Um, but I'm not sure that everybody goes that route. Yeah. You know, they always try and find the best solution in-house. And how about eyes? My big bugbear. Um, I had five thermal ablation treatments on my eyes and they lifted slightly but I'm thinking gosh you know after all that you'd have expected you know a magical result not the case I mean sagging eyes are they best really is is surgery still the gold standard or are there other options that are genuine you get genuine results so there there are other options but they're they're infrequently the best mm -hmm. so you can use filler in upper eyelids, mm -hmm. lower eyelids successfully. You can use Botox successfully if some of it is a brow issue. Uh, you can use those skin tightening treatments successfully, surface heating, again, usually RF, but only if the degree of skin excess is within a certain range. Okay. And I don't find for uppers that you get enough. Mm -hmm. So my experience is I do upper lids in the office surgically under local. Yes. You don't go to sleep. You don't need a medical clearance. You walk in. You don't even need an escort to bring you home. We just numb you. We tell you funny stories. We play nice music. We do your upper lids. And a week later, like, you're good. I found what Dr. Westrick has to say fascinating because I've become more and more aware of the potential of radio frequency through the before and after results that I've seen on YouTube and in the media of in-clinic treatments. And also through my own experience of using an at-home radio frequency device, which I will link to here. I get asked a lot about fat loss around the face. And while very little research has been done on the risk of fat loss relating to these more powerful anti-aging treatments, there have been a lot of anecdotal reports. So next time, Dr. Westrich is going to tell us about the risks and how they can best be managed. And he also reveals why plastic surgeons don't always relish working with celebrities. If you haven't already subscribed then by doing so and hitting the notification bell, you can watch that video and more from me as soon as they're published. I do love to hear from you, so let me know if you've tried any of the treatments discussed today and what your experience was. For now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.